This is Digital Pathology Today. Now here's your host, Dr. Joseph Anderson. We all know what an index is, and we all know what search is. After all, we use Google many times a day. But what do these concepts mean in digital pathology? Welcome to Digital Pathology Today. I'm Joe Anderson. Our guest today is Patrick Miles, CEO of Huron Digital Pathology. We're going to be talking about slide indexing, image search, and of course, Huron Digital Pathology's participation in the massive project to digitize the repository from the Joint Pathology Center, or the former AFIP. This episode of Digital Pathology Today has been brought to you in part by JAV Advisors. With over 16 years experience, JAV Advisors focuses on business and management consulting for digital pathology and artificial intelligence in deployment within histology, pathology, and cytology laboratories throughout the world. Call 213-258-6268 for more information. JAV Advisors. Patrick Miles from here on Digital Pathology. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, thank you for having me. We have a lot to talk about. You're involved in an exciting new project with the Joint Pathology Center. We'd love to hear about that. But first, maybe tell us a little bit about your experience in digital pathology, uh, You know how you got involved with it, interested, and what your journey's been so far at, at Huron Digital Pathology. Sure thing. So yeah, I'm the CEO of Huron Digital Pathology, and we're a supplier of whole slide scanning hardware and AI-enabled image search software. And I've been with the company for a little over six years. I, I actually come from a an imaging company that makes cameras for many of the scanners that are in this market, including Huron's. And, but to be honest, I, I didn't really have a lot of exposure to uh, digital pathology before joining Huron. It's actually been a, a wonderful learning experience. Uh, there's so many people from patholo- pathologists to scientists to vendors, and they're all really passionate about using technology to, the, to make the world a healthier and better place. So. And it's actually, a, it's, it's a really an exciting time to be involved in this field. Uh, we're seeing what I see as a convergence of incredible imaging technology, uh, advancements in computing horsepower, connectivity, and, and of course, more recently, advancements in artificial intelligence and machine learning. I, I kind of see it as a perfect storm. Yeah, absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. So, and what I find is it's getting more and more exciting. And thanks to uh, increased connectivity and the network effect, this technology is becoming more and more valuable, more and more useful to people. And we're able to do more and more things with it. So at Huron, maybe just tell us a little bit how you started. You started producing scanners and then you've you've grown. You're growing into uh, different applications. That's right. I mean, our, our, our core business has been... Uh basically sophisticated uh, scanning instruments for digitizing biopsy slides. And we've been been successful with a number of very high profile institutions that use our technology to help them advance their digital uh, workflows. More recently, we've developed uh, some innovative patented technology in the field of AI enabled image search that's bringing really new capabilities to bring intelligence to uh, large archives of unstructured data. As we go forward, we're finding there's lots and lots of missing links. So first we garnered the ability to actually scan these images and store them. Now that we've achieved that, now we're launching into this new era where we can actually mine these images for data or first convert the images into data and then bring all of this new AI enabled technology to bear. So what is slide indexing? You know, we kind of know what indexing means roughly. It's the thing you find at the back of a book or other forms of entertainment or data, but what, what is slide indexing? More and more hospitals are deploying these digital pathology workflows. And so they're, they're amassing these uh, large whole slide image archives in cases, some cases, you know, millions of digital slides. But there's there's really has, hasn't been a practical way to be able to search and find similar images based on image content. So, and this has to do with the fact that these whole site images are are so large; they're literally gigabytes or more in size, and and that therefore they're impossible to compare with each other at full resolution. Searching by text is uh, impractical. Like who's supposed to label all of all of these images? And and frankly, the the human language is uh, unable to sufficiently describe the complexity of what's uh, going on in the slide. So when we talk about indexing whole slide images, what we're talking about is we have a a patented AI-based technique that 
really represents each digital slide as compact and super efficient barcodes and these are we're kind of taking a fingerprint of each image where the the barcodes represent the unique features of the slide and with our technique each one of these gigabyte images is represented as mere kilobytes worth of ones and zeros so so once a large once it's indexed the whole slide archive can be instantly searched based solely on the image content itself a human being looking at an HNE slide is kind of an infinite thing infinite number of possible features colors sizes shapes cells you know distance between cells size of nucleus proportion of cells making glands you know whatever the features may be but at some level you're saying you're identifying discrete features right so you have to kind of put a limit on it it might be a thousand or whatever the number may be or maybe give us an idea of how many types of features we're looking at but is that part of it we're in some sense it becomes a discrete thing so that it can then in turn be converted into data you know right now i'm sitting in front of a, a computer and i have a keyboard and a mouse and i have a, a coffee mug and those are the kind of the features of, of what's in front of me and there's a lot of other things that are going on at the same time in the image what our technique basically does is it finds these these areas of the image that represent it and then we have a unique way of converting that that image data into ones and zeros which are very very compact from a data standpoint so that really what you're doing is you're representing the image that you're looking at but you're you're represented it as basically the key features but each one of those features are uh, basically ones and zeros that can be quickly and easily compared to each other in real time Incredibly fascinating. So let's talk about searchable images. This is where it kind of becomes personal for me because I remember, because I think this is such a fascinating concept because search has become such a part of modern life. Google search is something everyone everywhere does every day, many times a day. And I remember as a trainee in pathology, the group of us was admonished by our training director, right? Because there would be an unknown conference and you would get all these oddball cases. And the only thing the only resource we had was to scramble back to a textbook and try to find a picture or an image of a case that we thought matched our case right so i mean that was that was very primitive and he said well that's a horrible way to practice pathology we were just, we didn't know what to <laughs> how to respond you know but i think about that and so there's many applications for you know searchable images so number one would be training you know number two would be a pathologist or an ai system making a diagnosis on the spot in real time or then probably research right curate or cultivating large data sets and, and drawing conclusions uh, from these images so maybe just talk a little bit about what goes into a searchable image how do we search for it is it by text is it by feature is it by matching the case we have in front of us with all the possible cases that came before it how does how exactly does that work yeah, well, I think you, you hit the nail on the head when, uh, you know, talking about search. I, I can envision that most of, uh, most of your listeners have already done at least one Google search the, since the beginning of this podcast. What we're doing really is we're, we're offering the ability to search by image content where the image is the search criteria. So that, that really opens up some incredible opportunities in this field of computational pathologies. I'll, I'll give you a couple of uh, examples. So let's say you have a pathologist that's working on a difficult case, and then they'd like to know if any of their colleagues have seen anything similar to what they're seeing. It's like, I'm looking at something, have you seen anything like this? And, and, and what do you think of it? Can you provide some insight? With image search, really what, what happens using your, uh, your textbook example, the pathologist can basically highlight an area of the image and the image search engine delivers up search results of similar images that are available at, at her hospital or hospital network in real time. And through integration with the search engine with the image management system and connecting with the lab information system, the pathologist can then read the associated pathology reports and any other diagnostic data that's associated with those search results from colleagues that they trust and they can then use that information to basically inform their diagnosis and this not only helps to increase the efficiency of the pathologist to be able to gain access instantly to that knowledge it also helps to 
reduce diagnostic error because when they do the searches, they're finding multiple instances of it and multiple reports from multiple experts. And therefore, they're accessing the knowledge of uh, multiple pathologists and as much as basically is contained in that hospital network. So just to take this at a bigger picture, we see image search as a real core capability that can help bring democratization to pathologies. Imagine a, a doctor or a nurse practitioner in sub-Saharan Africa where there's only one pathologist per one million residents. They could instantly access the subspecialty uh, knowledge that's contained in evidently diagnosed cases from the experts at Memorial Sloan Kettering or, or Ohio State University, Hosp University Hospital. It's game changing. This episode of Digital Pathology Today has been brought to you in part by DJT Solutions, your single source for all your digital pathology requirements, from consultation services to system requirements, including installation, training, and life cycle support. Since 1995, DJT Solutions, we are your best choice for your best results. That is a big theme with digital pathology is this idea of being able to democratize care and democratize access to expertise. I can think of several use cases for searchable images. So I think one is, of course, getting the diagnosis in real time, right? So you have a challenging case and what can we find that matches this and then using that to inform our diagnosis. And then, but also I think it opens up a whole other world in research. How can we identify certain features and then correlate this with clinical outcome, right? And then search for this to discover things that we never even knew about before, or we had a vague idea that we're there and so on. So um, is this an ongoing area of marrying the searchable image features with clinical outcomes? Oh, absolutely. I, I think it's, um, you know, the real, the, the holy grail of all this is really that connection and the, the image search is really the key that unlocks it to be able to connect it to treatment plans, patient outcomes, genomics data. It opens up new potential for drug discovery. It's a real core enabling uh, technology. You know, we found connections just, just within, you know, a, in a pan cancer uh, validation study we did, we found connections between particular diseases and, and we were like asking whether or not that was error. Or, you know, when we're searching, you should be able to find the same thing, but we're finding other things. And the pathologists we work with said, hold on a second, that's actually, we see that all the time. Intuitively, that makes sense, but there's no there's no real way to uh, be able to capture that uh, scientifically. This image search uh, capability, we're able to basically make connections not only between particular diseases and particular uh, with other disease with other diseases in different organs, but we're also able to make the connections between pathologic with the molecular, and it's a wonderful uh, wonderful opportunity pathologist listeners out there can identify with that seeing something repeatedly or maybe a few times right you just see a pattern but you don't appreciate the significance or you don't know why it is but it's something you've noticed right but you can't base really anything on it and I guess that's kind of what becomes known as experience or your intuition or your diagnostic feel it what it's what makes a good pathologist but I think it sounds like now we'll be able to quantitate that and really to bring together the great minds real and really identify you know new histologic features and really improve our ability to correlate what we see under the microscope or on the computer monitor with clinical outcome and, and ultimately make uh, better treatment plans for patients yeah so now speaking of large archives and data sets and slides uh, congratulations on this project with the joint pathology center so let's maybe tell the folks out there who may not know about a little bit about the jpc so probably we, we Many of us know it as the former AFIP, um, which has been with us for many, many years. I've heard <laughs> uh, perhaps even going back to the Civil War in some iteration or form, but it's been a rich repository since at least the 1950s, uh, housing you know, great expertise, not only among the staff pathologists there, but a great collection of H&E uh, stained slides as well as gross uh, specimens. It's, it was a military project based around Washington, D.C. So maybe tell us a little bit about, you know, how the AFIP became the Joint Pathology Center and then how you're coming to be able to work with them. 
Thank you. It's actually, it's quite an honor to be part of such a incredible project. The various um, institutions and vendors and uh, people involved, it's an incredible uh, uh, collaboration. So like you, I, I you know, I see the, the Joint Pathology Center. It's quite an institution, right? When you look at the gross numbers, when I first learned about the, the JPC about three years ago, you know, I was thinking, wow, 55 million glass slides. It's incredible. And, and the fact that some of the, you know, tissue does, as you say, go back to the Civil War and the fact that it, it spans every every major epidemic and pandemic in the past century, and of course that has a lot more context in the in, in the world that we're living today. And and uh, knowing that, you know, they use this um, this repository to sequence the 1918 influenza virus. It killed more than 40 million people worldwide. There's such a great opportunity to help provide clues to what's going on and how we can combat COVID. So it's it's truly uh, one of a kind. There, there's not there's no other way to put it. So what exactly is the project? And it sounds like uh, it's not only going to be here on Digital Pathology, but there's other other partners involved. But roughly, what, what are you folks doing? Absolutely. Like we're a, a small part of a, a team that, that's working to, you know, really bring a realization of this. I mean, the, the JPC is basically undertaking this large modernization effort. And really what they want to do is they, they want to leverage this rich repository and they have a goal to enhance biomedical research uh, for infectious disease and cancer. They really want to make it easier to share data with the researchers, clinicians and educators. They've really put together this very impressive team of um, experts from across the field and as well as kind of a who's who of uh, industry vendors. It's really about making the repository more accessible and useful. They really want to kind of remove the, the barriers because it's the, the Joint Pathology Center, part of the Defense Health Agency. There's a, there's a public acts, uh, aspect of it, and they really want to overcome these accessibility barriers to accessing large amounts of meaningful data from diseases. So it's, it's a large effort from a Furon standpoint. We're the image search component of that workflow, so we'll we'll index the images as they're scanned and then allow them to be quickly and easily searched. And uh, really our, our role is to help unlock that rich knowledge that's in the, the JPC repository. It sounds like you know this may go a long way to democratizing access to expertise, access to images, access to patient data, because I think one of the huge advantages of digital pathology is the tissue is not consumed in the process, like you know, like molecular testing and, and so on. So once the image is there, it's shareable forever, and it's shareable with everyone who may want it. Because that I think that was kind of a choke point or a sticking point. Publicly funded agencies having limited amounts of tissue that people want access to, academic researchers, companies, and so on, presumably to do research and develop uh, new products to help patients. You know, but there's just a limit to the tissue. And now I think with digital pathology, it really is going to go a long way to make it available to anyone and everyone. It's a fantastic uh, initiative and it's it's really interesting how how the whole thing has, has come about. It's been in the works for a while from what I understand and it was really early last year that the, um, the U.S. Defense Innovation Board recommended that the JPC begin this project and I think in some ways, uh, <laughs> whether it's the case or not, I believe the the COVID pandemic was actually a real catalyst for this project to get off the ground. And, you know, I, I think a key part of the project is uh, the incredible collaboration that's under underway. And, and it's, it's really all hands on deck. Like there's multiple public and private research institutions. There's academic medical centers. There's multiple vendors. And there's some really great technical and clinical staff at the JPC. It's really the it's really the best of uh, best of the best working on this. It has every every chance of uh, of resounding success. Is it a defined project? Is it ongoing, or are you you know scanning or archiving or making searchable a specific number of cases, or is it going to be, you know, maybe give us an idea of the scope? How how large is the project, and is it ongoing, or is it a is it a kind of a discrete thing? It's really a living, breathing project, to, to put it best, and it's expected to take between uh, five and 10 years to complete the project. So very much at the, um, at the early days, and there's gonna be a lot of learning and a lot of work. Clearly, a, it's clearly a watershed pro uh, project for the advancement of digital pathology and computational uh, pathology. You know, there, there's really only a handful of institutions in the world that have undertaken this scale of projects. So there's a lot of eyes on it and a lot of um, 
people really cheering it on and and we're we're most excited about the potential to first get the workflow up and running work with the partners that were uh, that we're working with and then you know we're talking amazon web services prosha visio farm really to get the workflow in place and then to be a key part of scaling the project to really help realize the potential of, of gaining access to this rich repository. Yeah, and so what do you think success will look like, not only for the Joint Pathology Center and everyone involved, but what a successful outcome going to be for here on Digital Pathology? For me, at least, I, I see success really in terms of bringing multiple parties together to provide a workflow that allows this knowledge to be shared. And, and it's, a, it's a real exercise in collaboration. You know, whenever I, I speak to people about the JPC project, I ask them to envision a researcher in a remote area of the United States, just for example, being able to gain access to this incredible resource that can lead to the next research breakthrough, then multiply that by a thousand. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I think that is great. And you mentioned, you know, the ability to collaborate with all these other great companies and people in the field. So do you have any other projects on the horizons or any, any other projects that you would like to undertake or any gaps that you see out there that you can fill? When you look at our image search platform, it's really designed for indexing large archives of image data. So the more data, the better. We're talking to a number of institutions that have either large existing or growing digital slide archives. There's more and more of these institutions that are amassing these large image archives. So really what we're most interested in and, and what we're active in is, is uh, basically helping these institutions bring intelligence to this, uh, the unstructured data in their archives. There's a lot of room uh, to grow there and not really a lot you can add. So uh, Patrick Miles uh, from Huron Digital Pathology, thank you so much for being with us. So before we wrap up, maybe just tell us what excites you uh, and how do you see the field evolving in the next 10 years or so? Despite some of these high profile projects that, that we're, we're hearing about, and, and certainly the JPC is uh, one of them, we're still in the early days, right, of uh, digital transformation in pathology. You know, I... We talk about this all the time. Maybe maybe five percent or seven percent of glass slides are digitized each year. Like we got so far to go in this, and it'll be great to see more and more glass slides digitized, so we can start to take advantage of the incredible enhancements that are happening in computational pathology to improve patient outcomes and advance research. But that they really rely on these big data sets and. I'm really interested in this idea of democratization. You know, we have this great opportunity to give the world this broad access to pathology expertise with, in, with amazing technology that's being developed and deployed. And that's, that motivates, motivates me more than anything. Despite all of the excitement, like you said, we're still at surprisingly low levels of actually having slides scanned or digitized between five and 10% or so. So to use a baseball analogy, I completely agree. We're still in the first inning. Our guest has been Patrick Miles from here on Digital Pathology. We'll see you next time on Digital Pathology Today. This has been Digital Pathology Today. Please be sure to subscribe. Thanks for listening.